and people's perceptions of what race you're in, and white are at the top and black are at the bottom, and Asian and Native American and people of sort of light brown hue are in the middle, and Latinos are down, you know, and then blacks are at the bottom. Racism is not simply about how we get along on an individual level, but it has to do with who has institutional and social power. White people have the political and social power in our society, and so, and that is a given, and if you look at certain if you pick apart social and political situations, you can see that very clearly. I think it's, it's quite obvious. Whites get privilege and experience the advantage of being in a system that thinks white is better than, you know, than, than folk of color. And so there's all this unearned advantage that's going on all the time. You know, particularly in a society like the United States, it's, it's hard to confront racism unless you understand how, if you're racialized as white, you benefit from racism. Just because I am white and have these privileges, I, I, par I participate in a racist system. And that doesn't make, that it's not my fault, I can't help it, I'm born to it. And, you know, and that's what being white means. But I, I do think and assume that, that that white privilege is in fact the kind of racism that you can't avoid. All I gotta do is sit down and close my eyes and things are gonna just move forward or in sort of in white interests, and there's a way in which I'm, I'm complicit. I collude. I don't say anything. I don't do anything to stop it or challenge it. And in that way, I really do think that's, that's how racism works, and that's a way in which I'm racist. And the difference now is that I don't try and prove to anyone else or, or even to myself that I'm not racist. I sort of assume that, know that, and get on with doing anti-racist work as best I can. All right, Shalom. This is Brother Nahalia from the GMS Orlando camp. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and a sincere salutation to all Yuakim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Akwath, who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. I'm going to start off with Psalms chapter 64 and verse 8. All right, and it reads, so they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. All right, now what you saw was a video clip of what appeared to be Edomites or, or so-called white people. All right, giving their uh, opinion and their perspective concerning the rulership of the so-called white man and how all of the the so-called white privilege, all right, which is really Edomite privilege, um, exist. You know, you have our people who are fighting tooth and nail to prove something that everyone else already knows exists. You know, when they talk about uh, so-called white privilege and, you know, the average Jake tries to discuss it, you know, and, and they try to downplay it. They call it gaslighting, you know, try to pretend that it doesn't exist. But what you saw was a, di a bunch of, you know, a handful of Edomites, you know, basically explain that, you know, they understand that this exists. All right. And what that really is, is a commonwealth. All right. When you go into Ephesians, the second chapter, the Lord talks about the commonwealth of Israel. Well, right now, uh, we're in the rulership of the so-called white man, which is the, which are the Edomites. Since they are in rulership by default, there's a common wealth amongst Edomites and it doesn't always translate into financials, meaning you're not going to have all of the so-called white people um, on a on a financial level of Bill Gates. But the privilege that they benefit from is the common privilege of acceptance, meaning they can walk into a room and even though um, you don't know anything about them, just off first glance of them having the appearance of Edomites, of so-called white people, they are accepted. They are treated differently. All right. And this is the common wealth of a nation that is in rulership. This is why in Ephesians, the uh, second chapter, it talks about the commonwealth of Israel. All right. And I want to get that really quick. I want to grab Ephesians, the second chapter. All right. And I'll start at 11. And then I want to get the definition of commonwealth so you can get a better understanding, Lord willing, um, of this topic. All right. Real quick. Ephesians 2 and 11 reads, Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. 
that at that at that time, excuse me, ye were without Hamashiach, being aliens from the common wealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without power in the world. All right. And being strangers from the covenants first. All right. Old and new shows you that this is talking about Israelites. All right. Just as a, a sidebar. But let's go into the commonwealth. All right. Let's go into commonwealth. All right. Let's get the Greek word for commonwealth. All right. Now, Greek word is politia, politia. All right. And it says the administration of civil affairs, a state or commonwealth citizenship, the rights of citizens. All right. It says citizenship, concretely, a community commonwealth freedom. All right. Now, let's get the etymology of this this word. Let's get the etymology of commonwealth. All right. And this will expound on it even more. All right. Because contrary to popular belief, you Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans, you're not treated like citizens. You're treated like second class citizens. When you look at how this system is structured, you have on paper the same rights. But when you go into restaurants, when you go into public places, you're treated differently. You're not you don't have the common benefit of acceptance. You're treated like a criminal in a judicial system and you're, you're treated as you're guilty until proven innocent. Whereas the so-called white man who uh, who calls himself uh, a European. All right. Or a so-called white person or a Caucasian. When they uh, approach the judicial system, they are seen as innocent until proven guilty. This is just one of those sidebars that shows you who's in rulership. Now, we can deal with the face on the money as well, which is a, a clear indicator. But I want to deal with this in, in particular because of this video. All right. And the statements that they're making, which we know to be true. But when you have Jake trying to explain it, they get gaslit in these uh, public uh, media and news as if what we're saying is so far fetched. Even Jake, who's in the world, who's. You know, who talk about racism and prejudice. You know, they try to treat Jake like he's just crime victim. But these things are true. But this is all a commonwealth. And this happens all throughout civilization. Whenever a nation is in rulership, the average citizen of that nation benefits from it. All right. So this isn't to get in your feelings and get emotional about it. But it is to bring up a beautiful topic that's twofold. Right. Because right now we're living in the uh, commonwealth of Edom. And they benefit and we don't. However, on the back end. All right. Lord willing, we're part of that number. The entire nation of Israel are going to benefit from the commonwealth of Israel under Hamashiach. That's why it says we're joint heirs. That means that rulership that Yahweh Shai is going to sit in his seat of glory. All right. That Yahweh is going to give to him. The nation of Israel are going to commonly benefit from that. Or it's going to be considered what is known as a commonwealth. Like it says in Ephesians, the second chapter. So the etymology of commonwealth says commune wealthy. All right. From mid 15th century, it says a community, whole body of people in a state from common adjective plus wealth. Specifically. Let's jump down because I just want to get the point. Yeah. From 1550s, as anybody of persons united by some common interests. And what is that common interest on this side? Edomite supremacy. This is why even other nations are participating uh, in it. Now, on the other side of this, through the spirit, we're going to have that common wealth, that common benefit as a nation of people. All right. In the kingdom. And that's the difference. All right. Jumping down real quick. Yeah, that's it. That's the point on that. But yeah, it says common uh, belonging to all. And then wealth is happiness. Also, prosperity and abundance. So belonging to all. All right. That happiness, that prosperity and that benefit is going to come down to the nation of Israel. As we were on the bottom by ourselves, we're going to be on the top. Lord willing, we're part of that nation. Uh, the, uh, I'm, I'm sorry that we're a part of that. That uh, first fruits All right, because eventually the entire nation of Israel are going to benefit from the rulership. But Lord willing, we want to be a part of that first res that first fruits that the, the remnant. All right. And that's going to open up what the commonwealth of Israel, which is what the covenants, the promises, the access to mercy. And in the kingdom, there's going to be a separation. All right. You have people like Vocab Malone who try to pretend like 
you know, the nation of Israel, what they were promised is going to be some multinational blessing. No, it's going to be a blessing for the nation of Israel, the house of Israel, as the prophecies say. All right, real quick, this is uh, Isaiah 61 and 9. And it reads, and their seed shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. All right. That's very plain through the spirit. All right. There's going to be a separation. Again, it says, and their seed shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. Now, when we go into Isaiah 61. And we grab the Hebrew word for known. All right. I want to get the Hebrew word for known and acknowledge. All right. So the word known is Yadar, which is to know. All right. But let's get acknowledge. So in uh, in Isaiah 61 and nine, the word for acknowledge is Nakar. All right. And it says to recognize, acknowledge, know, respect, discern, regard, because a lot of common wealth is common respect. This is why other nations, when they come to America, they treat the so-called white man differently because they understand that he's in rulership right now in the kingdom of heaven. Under Hamashiach, the nation of Israel are going to be recognized and respected. That's why in Numbers it says that we shall not be reckoned amongst the nations. But when they do see us, they're going to acknowledge, Lord willing, we're part of that number. They're going to acknowledge that we are the seed of the Lord, man, as a house. These are specific blessings for a specific nation of people, man. All right, when you look at Isaiah 61 and 9, which hasn't come to pass, it says their seed shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. All right. The seed, which is the house. Now, we're scattered amongst all nations. You know, you have some of our people that look like other nations, but ultimately the Lord is dealing with a particular family on the earth. And just like the wicked are in rulership and the nation who is considered the wicked, they all commonly benefit from that rulership in the kingdom of heaven. We're all Lord willing, we're part of that number as the nation of Israel. All right. We're going to benefit from the rulership. This is the patience and the faith of the saints through the spirit. All right. So Lord willing, this was edifying. I just wanted to hit that point through the spirit. I saw this clip, you know, and the spirit was just on me to jump on it. All right. So Lord willing, this was edifying. With that, I want to give all praise, honor and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and a sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Akwath, who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. Shalom.